Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to create a mosaic effect using the path effect pattern along paths. Seeing a mosaic is more than just a shape filled with small tiles. I try to use basic shapes, the node tool, pattern along paths and color it in with the dropper tool. The tiles should follow and enhance the shape. In this case, a fish. I start by creating the outlines of the shapes. I like to use basic shapes like circles and rectangles and deform them with the node tool. It seems the faster approach than starting from scratch with the pen tool. I take the circle, convert it to a path and use the node tool to turn the circle into a fin. Duplicate that shape and modify it to match the next shape. I duplicate again and use the node tool to create the tail fins. When working with outlines like this, I want to keep them consistent, so I have the scaling turned off. As I will be filling these shapes with mosaic tiles later, I try to avoid too much detail, too small areas, and in order to keep the length of this video manageable, a design that is not overly complex. With all the shapes in place, it's time to change the stroke. I'm going with a dark outline and a dark fill. I lower the fins to be behind the body and it's starting to look like a fish. For the mosaic tile pattern, I start with a square, duplicate it six times. I scale them to match the size that will be used on the fish. Not too small, it would create too many tiles, and not too big as it would make it hard to match the shapes. I combine all those shapes with a pass union and then take the node tool to slightly modify the angles and the positions of some of the nodes to make it look less even. This way I should be able to hide the repeating nature of the pattern and make it look a little bit more man-made. While I'm working on the pattern, I might as well do the variations. I want one version that tapers towards one end. I duplicate my path and add the path effects, perspective and envelope. I switch to the node tool to modify the effect. There are white nodes next to the gray ones. By moving those, it will transform my shape. Once I turn it from perspective to envelope, it won't distort the width. I duplicate that one and mirror it and create another copy and break it apart so I have six tiles again. Now the six is not a good number. I need one in the center, so I duplicate a tile to put it in the center. Combine three and use the envelope path effect to taper them at one end, take the other three and taper them at the other end and then combine those three shapes with path union to again create one path. Let's try this pattern. I create a line with the pen tool, curve it and assign the path effect pattern along path. I select the top pattern, copy it and paste it to the path. The content in your clipboard from copying will be the pattern that is assigned to the path. So I select the path and click on paste path in the path effect. The pattern will take on the attributes of the line. I need to remove the stroke and add a fill. And we have the pattern stretch from one end to the other. By changing the pattern of the copies to repeated or repeated stretched, it repeats the pattern along the length of the pass from one end to the other. To avoid the first and the last tile touching each other, I add spacing and they don't really match up. So I go into my original pattern and move the two nodes up. I can copy and paste a different pattern in, or I can copy and paste the mosaic tile I created into that pass. This one is tiling nicely. Once a design reaches a certain level of complexity, it makes sense to organize your layers. 
I put my parts on one layer. The design outline has its own layer and I create a new layer for the tiles. Naming your layers only takes a few seconds, but it makes it a lot easier to understand the structure of a file weeks or months after its creation. I paste the line with the pattern to this new layer and can adjust it with the node tool as I could any other vector line, except for the pattern following my design. Now, if I bend it, it bends the pattern. If I curve it, the pattern will follow the curve. I can change the pass nodes, alter the angles, add new nodes to match the shape a little bit better. I try to avoid very sharp corners as those will distort the pattern. I can extend my line by just adding more nodes. At this point, I will speed up the video as I will be repeating the same process of adjusting the lines copying and adjusting again. This corner is a good example of the distortion that happens when the angles are too tight. Adding an extra node and adjusting the corners slightly usually fixes the problem. I copy the existing lines rather than create new ones. That way I don't have to reassign the pattern along paths. For small areas, it's faster to create new shapes with a pen tool than trying to fit the pass in and adjust it to match. For the eye, I create a circle and assign the pattern to pass with the same pattern. As much as I try, I can't make it fit properly with six tiles. I duplicate my pattern. The color does not matter, I just need the shapes and reduce it to three tiles, paste those on, and now I have more flexibility as far as the tiling and spacing goes than I would have had with six tiles. To keep the tile size identical, I set the pattern of my copies to repeated rather than repeated stretched. This leads to either gaps at the end or overlaps. I take the overlaps and will fix them by deleting the tiles later on. Again, I fill in small areas with a few hand-drawn tiles using the pen tool. For the fins, I want to add the tapered pattern at the end. I change the inner line to stretched. It does not make that much of a difference, so I get away with it and then create a straight line, add the pattern along pass and assign the tapered pattern. I reverse the pass because I picked the wrong pattern and I can now curve it to match the shape of the fin. I set this line to single stretched because the tapered pattern does not properly repeat and I just need it to fade out at the end and the stretch allows me to end it exactly where I want it. The resulting deformation of the tiles is neglectable. I duplicate the existing lines, modify them and trim them to match the shape. That way I'm slowly filling up the shape of the fish. I can change the pattern by simply copying a different path into my pattern. This is a good spot to use the double tapered path. As you can see, this one deforms a lot more than the other ones. At this stage, I'm not worried about overlaps. This line gets into the shape of the fins. 
I will fix that later. Another setting in the pattern along paths is the widths. It increases the widths of the pattern more like the widths of a stroke. The height or the thickness increases, not the size of the pattern in height and widths. This is a little bit more fiddly than just filling a shape with a pattern, but the result is closer to a real mosaic. To me, that is worth the extra effort. I copy whole sections and adjust them. The fins are a different shape, but the elements are similar, so I might as well copy the top and paste it to the bottom and then fill it in. For the small areas that are left, I use the pen tool and create the shapes manually. At this stage, I save the design as a new file, as the next action is destructive, turning the pattern along paths into a path. I select all shapes and use the path object to pass and I select all those shapes, use the node tool and set all the lines to straight. That way I don't have any curves in there which makes it easier to manipulate. I go in with the node tool, delete the overlaps, adjust nodes to fit the shapes better and clean up the areas that look too tightly packed. And again, this is a task that requires a little bit of patience. Setting every line to straight also deformed the eye into a square, so I put a new circle in there. I still don't have individual tiles. I have clusters of tiles where they were connected along the same line. When I select this pass and go in with the shape of the tool, you can see the individual tiles that make up this pass. For the coloring, I need to separate all those, so I select all my paths and break them apart. Instead of 61 objects, I now have 427. Each tile now is its own shape. I can select multiple and still make adjustments with the node tool. So far, it looks okay and it's time to color it. This is another good point to save your file, create a new version. In case things go wrong, you have a file to fall back on. For the coloring, I create some circles to pick the color from. I have my base orange. I darken that one, go a little bit more on the red side. If you are unsure about colors and the shading between two or three colors you want to use in your design, duplicate a shape set the opacity to lower, overlap them, use the dropper tool to pick the color and then increase the opacity to 100% again and you have the mixed tone you're after. For this design, the seven shapes I have picked now should be enough and I can start by selecting a whole area and color that. I take the bottom of the fish and color it lighter. Using the dropper tool, I pick the second lightest color. Using the dropper tool, I color the top part in the darkest tone. The eye, I'm not quite sure if it should be darker or lighter. I'll leave that for now and then go in. And the dropper tool, if you hold the control key, it takes the color and allows you to fill the next tile in the same way. In this video, I stuffed up a lot coloring elements I did not want to color. Just take your finger off the control every now and then in order to avoid that. I was a bit clumsy here and you will see that I color the initial tiles instead of picking up a new color. Once you have your 
palette set up, the dropper tool is the fastest way to just pick and color, especially when you're dealing with 400 plus tiles. While coloring, I try to shade certain areas. The fins are lighter than the body. The belly is lighter than the top. At the same time, I try not to place too many tiles of the same color right next to each other. A little bit of variation makes it look less uniform. I'm not happy with the spacing of the eyes, so I just scale that part down and a white eye seems to look better. This is the mosaic pattern colored. Again, a good point to save as the next step will be adding additional effects. These are purely optional, but I thought it would look nice to change the color and add some depth to the design. I select all my shapes, copy them, put them in the new layer and combine them with pass union to create one pass. I duplicate this pass, move it down slightly and use pass difference to cut those two shapes from each other, leaving just a highlight edge on the tiles. I lower the opacity of this white shape to mix the color with the tile underneath. Rather than being a pure white, it is now shading the tile. Using the pen tool, I create a wide shape, add a gradient to fade it at the bottom, lower the opacity and set it to overlay, which mixes the colors nicely, add a blur and instantly have a lot more color variations than just my initial colors. I duplicate, scale and reposition that shape a few times across the design I add a drop shadow to add depth to the design and make it stand out from the background. I duplicate the outline shapes, give them a black fill and a blur and move them down slightly and adjust the opacity. At this stage, I call the design done. This is my mosaic goldfish done in Inkscape. I did a similar design of a butterfly using mirrored clones to just create one side of the wings. For the flower I used clones as well, creating the petal as a clone, duplicating it and rotating it around the center. This is a slightly more advanced use of Inkscape, but it is not as hard as it might look. I used basic shapes, the node tool, pattern up long paths and the dropper tool to create the goldfish mosaic, which turned out to be quite a bit of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see on my channel and I will see you again soon.